Hi EV Deep Divers, today we're turning into power users and we're getting into Zumaru's diagnostics data, so let's go! I had some recent adventure trying to get the maximum speed when charging Zumaru on a Tesla supercharger, link for that in the description below. Since I was unable to hit the maximum charging speed, I contacted the Tesla service center about it. Uh, who basically said that um, there is an imminent software update that is about to address this issue. So I have not much to do other than waiting, except maybe trying to eliminate all other factors. So in my last test, what I did is that I preconditioned the car. Um, that, that means that I turned on the HVAC, which also preconditions the battery, for half an hour. Then I set the, the destination to be the Tesla supercharger, which also preconditions the battery. Basically, the car knows that it's driving to a supercharger, it knows that it's about to, to charge, so it uh, tries to bring the battery to the optimum temperature. And then I drove the car for another half an hour, which should also help do that. Um, I had the impression that those things were enough to bring the battery temperature to the right level, but what if they weren't? Some instrumentation is in order. I looked around if there is an easy way to see the battery cell temperature. Unfortunately, this information is not available in the infotainment system. Um, this information is not available in the app, and it's also not available in any kind of third-party apps that I could find in the App Store. Um, being a developer, I also took a look into the Tesla API, if there is any kind of endpoint that might be able to provide this, this information, but apparently there wasn't. So the next logical step would be to get a diagnostics uh, scanner, basically an OBD dongle, and plug it in into the car to try to read those values. And then it's where the first surprise came. So this car has no OBD port. How can a modern car not have an OBD port? So from what I know, the OBD port is mandatory in the US since 1996 and mandatory in Europe since 2000. So how can a modern car, like a Model 3, which is like the most bleeding edge car you can get right now, not have an OBD port? Digging around, I found some information that Tesla actually requested and got granted an exemption to the inclusion of the OBD port in a Model 3. <sighs> That's being so Apple of them and their proprietary ports. However, not all hope is lost, because it turns out there is a diagnostics bus going around the car. It's basically a bunch of wires carrying all the signals from the ECUs that you're able to tap into. Um, however, this is a bit tricky to be done, so I'm going to show you exactly how you're able to do that. In order to do that, you have to get yourself a wire harness. It's basically a wide cable that taps into the wiring, wiring harness of the car and basically splits it into a path going back into the car and another path going into an OBD port where you're able to plug in your OBD adapter. Um, however, this is easier said than done because first, this is not a cheap uh, accessory to, to buy. Uh, prices that I found on the internet were in the range of 100 euros. And in order to install it, you have to remove a piece of the car's trim. And of course, you're not done. You also need the actual OBD adapter. It's basically a dongle. Um, imagine a USB dongle, but not with a USB port, but with this specialized OBD2 port. And then the last thing you need is some piece of software that is able to use the data that the adapter spits out and it's able to provide them in a more user-friendly way. So let's say that the car talks gibberish on the bus and these, those needs to be translated into human-readable data. For example, temperature. I'm going to walk you through the entire process, but first things first, the very first thing that you need to do, and this is also very, very important, is to turn off the car. Uh, you might be wondering, isn't an EV off when it's parked? Turns out that it's not. So the first thing you want to do is to turn off the car. To do that, go here to the car icon, then safety and security, and then power off. Yes, we are sure. Now wait a few seconds and we should be good to go. To make your life easier, make sure that you remove the rear floor mats and that you push the front seats all the way forward. This will give you plenty of room to work on the trim easily. 
So next step is that we need to pry this piece of trim off. For that, normally you're going to need some tools because it's very tight, so it's very hard to squeeze your finger through. Uh, you might need something like that. Or something like that. Or something like that. Now, let's try with that first. I'll try from the bottom. So if I remember correctly, there is like five clips or maybe six. So one, two, three, four, five. Maybe there's another one. Let's see. Okay, I can squeeze that. So I'm going to try that. Mm -hmm. No. Let's try like that. No. So let's try from the top, maybe. Right, something is happening. Really, but that's that is so tight. Yes. Okay, one down. Hmm. Yeah, you need to be careful not to ruin the plastic. Come on. Why is that so hard? So I really don't want to ruin the plastic, so I try to be very careful. Maybe now I can try fingers. Or not. Okay, I'm gonna try this one in the bottom. Yeah, okay. You need to really stick it in. Yeah. And there we go. So we have one, two, three, four, five pins undamaged. Nice. Now this harness is exposed. So this is our hook point to the diagnostics uh, port, or maybe let's say to the diagnostics bus. So here, there is a clip. You press the clip and then try to take it out. There you go, easy. Now, next step, we take the harness, the one we ordered. 
So this cable has basically three ends. One is the OBD port, and this is the plugs that go into here, the car, and basically, and basically steal the signals. So I guess this goes here, or not. Yeah, probably. Maybe this way. Yes. And then the other one goes... I don't want to break it. Uh, let's see, how are we going to do that? Okay, I'll take it off one more time. Yes. I'm going to plug that in first. As it seems a bit harder to do. Or is it this way? No. Probably this way. Yes. Yes. Does it move? No, right? Okay. Not a problem. And then we go here. Done. And now we have a leftover, which is the OBD port. And that's basically it. Now we're ready to hook our own OBD diagnostics adapter. So, as you can see, this cable is too short and basically this uh, plug now kind of sticks out. So it might be a bit hard to, push the, to put the piece of plastic back. I could try to squeeze it in, but I think for now I'm just going to put it here. Maybe try to put one of the clips on so that it's not totally exposed. And yeah. For now, I'm going to have to leave with that. So, that's it for now. So, this is the end result. The trim part managed to go back in, and the cable is sticking out just enough to let me plug my adapter. And also to be able to hide it between the center, center console and the driver's seat. So, I'm going to slide it in here there almost invisible so let's go through the power of process once more um, the process is audible and also visible so now that we have the OBD adapter plugged in, you can see that the LEDs are blinking. So when the car is powered off at least the main systems, then those LEDs will go off. Plus, you'll hear, hear a relay. It's a loud clicking noise that it's definitely easy to, to hear. So let's do it. Go to the car icon, safety and security, power off. And then click the power off button. In order to do that, it's better not to be sitting in the driver's seat, so better to be in the back or be outside the car and have the window rolled down so that you're able to touch the screen. Now I'm sitting in the back, that's why you cannot see me. Um, and as you can see, the car is still powered down. So in a while we'll hear this clicking noise and then those LEDs will go off, so let's wait. It should be a matter of a few minutes. Maybe more than one, definitely less than ten. Did you hear that? It was quite obvious. So now the car is powered off and you can see that the LEDs of the OBD bus also are powered down. <clears throat> now I'm going to close the rear door and see if that uh, brings the car back on. Yes. So you also hear the relay, just clicked again. The screen turned on, so if you want to wake the car up again you just close one of the doors maybe also clicking one of the buttons in the front also does the trick but yeah easiest way is to just open or close one of the doors so that's it so guys i hope you liked this video it was a bit more complicated than the tutorials that i offered before um, this is a deep dive channel after all so i really wish that tesla included an obd port but if this is not the case we have to work ourselves around it 
Uh, hit this like button, hit the subscribe button. It will really help me to grow this channel and provide more useful videos to you. And see you guys in the next one.